Hello, everyone. I'm so sorry. We, our last session lasted a little bit longer than we expected. So we're back and we're ready. Um, I want to welcome you to the session, creating a culture of responsiveness, shifting the concept of office hours with uh, Dr. Dana Gray, who is a professor and endowed chair at Rogers State University and Marianne Lamer, adjunct instructor at Rogers State. So welcome. Marianne, can you hear me? I can. We're getting in now. Okay, perfect. All right. Give us just one minute to get this loaded. Oh, I haven't. We have an updated presentation. Sorry, I was in the prior session and couldn't get out of the Zoom room. <laughs> Anytime you'd like to start. Okay. Um, welcome, everyone. I my name is Dana Gray, and I've been with RSU since '05, and I'm here with uh, Dr. Lamer today, and we have a presentation: creating a culture of responsiveness, shifting the concept of office hours, and this is a topic that has been of interest to us for some time. In our presentation, and I realize we're running, we need to get started quickly. Um, we're going to talk about the importance, historical context, and the um, efficiency or effectiveness or efficacy of in-person office hours, how the learning environment has changed in the last 20 years, and particularly in the last three years after COVID or during COVID. And we're going to borrow some concepts from marketing. Both Marianne and I are marketing instructors and talk about service dimensions and delivery gaps. And then we want to talk about how we can create a culture of responsiveness. And hopefully we can get all that in in the next 20 minutes. <laughs> okay, the importance and historical context of in-person office hours. So the research literature says that the concept began decades ago, literally decades ago, um, with the notion that faculty needed to be available to students outside of the classroom. And so the concept was developed for faculty to sit in their offices in, during scheduled times for scheduled office hours. Um, that has that worked for some time, or at least was implemented for for some time, several decades actually, until technology shifted. And in the when the internet and browser was um, developed for for educational purposes about twenty years ago, then we started seeing the growth of online learning, email, and some development of new tools. So we have some extensive research literature here regarding how important faculty availability outside of the classroom is, but the format that that takes and the, and the effectiveness can vary greatly. As I mentioned, traditionally faculty outside of the classroom defined office hours as times when they would go physically sit in their offices and wait for students to, to visit them or to schedule appointments. And Learners today, especially adult learners, have multiple demands. They work, they have families, they may be online students, they may not live on campus or even live in the same area. So there's been considerable demand and interest in ways for faculty to be available outside of the classroom in more ways, more ways that are responsive. Uh, the research literature has looked at the effectiveness of faculty office hours and for, for both faculty and learners, and there's kind of a eh on both sides, um, both because students need help when they need help, they want help when they need it, not next Tuesday at 2 p.m. in person. Um, uh, faculty also report sometimes 
you know, the, they just need to be available when the learners need them. And when they sit in their office for office hours that are scheduled, they may not see anyone for days on end. Um, so with a transition or expansion to online course delivery, some universities have expanded office hours to include virtual office hours. And we see this with many online universities and online faculty. However, some on-ground universities still require the in-person office hours. The problem with that is we still have faculty, excuse me, we still have learners who need help when they need help. Not next Tuesday at 2 p.m., whether it's in a chat room or in person. So the, the problems that have plagued office hours continue. The lack of efficiency, the lack of use, and the perceived lack of value by learners and possibly by faculty. So the bottom line with our theory is that learners want to need help when they need it. I know I keep referring to next Tuesday at 3 p.m., but that's just kind of a, an example of how random office hours can be. This is even more of an issue, like I said, for adult learners that have multiple demands on their time. So in the last 20 years, but particularly the last 10 years, we have seen a lot of changes in the learning environment with learners, with technology, with course delivery and course design. With learners, we have a rapid increase in the number of adult learners, and they have increased demand for faculty availability and faster responsiveness. In today's commercial world, we know as customers, when we call help desks, we want help when we need help. We don't want to wait until, even if somebody calls us back within 24 hours, it can be frustrating. Um, a little side note, I just now got a phone call from the doctor. I called this morning. They said they would call me back. And I said, anytime except 2 to 3 p.m. So they called today at 2, 2 15, <laughs> 2 10. Um, for technology, we see more devices that are internet enabled, broader internet access and reach, more learning management system tools, and more platforms. We see video conferencing tools and the expansion of in-person office hours to include virtual office hours at some universities. We've seen a rapid growth in online and hybrid courses, course delivery format, with a great deal of variation in terms of course length and start dates. Some of the more traditional universities still have the spring, fall, and summer terms. Some programs have Oh, and we have eight and 16 week courses, but some programs may, such as nursing, may have five week courses. Um, some universities that are really focused on being flexible and versatile may have multiple start dates for programs. If you think about it, even in traditional universities, there's no reason we can't have start dates the second eight weeks of the spring and fall terms, right? And to take it a step further, if you have a start date for eight-week courses of every other month, then you can multiply your start time, start dates, by four or five. Mm -hmm. um, course design, we've made tremendous advances in quality matters and the growth of the research literature regarding best practices in online learning. So the question still begs, what type of faculty access availability do learners really need and want? And so we're going to borrow some lessons from marketing to look at this concept from a different direction. And I'm going to turn it over to Marianne. Thank you, Dana. So if we look at levels of service dimensions and, and delivery gaps, we, we look at responsiveness, responsiveness to the student, the reliability uh, that we're going to be there when we say we're going to be there the assurance that we will answer your questions, uh, the tangibles that are affected, that could be the, the learning environment, the office, the timing, and then the empathy. Are we going to understand the problem? And the question we ask is, do these office hours present a knowledge gap and a, a service gap? And so if we look at customer expectations for service quality, and this is really the learner expectation, right? Meeting them at their level, at their needs. 
Um, how do we manage the perception of our learners' expectations? Uh, what is our, our standard for delivering these, these office hours? Um, the actual service itself delivered, meaning did we meet in an office? Did we meet online? Did we Zoom? Did we take a call? Did we text? And then communications about the service quality, what they expect. And if you look at each of these areas, you're going to find there are some knowledge gaps and standard gaps, um, even delivery gaps in what we're telling the student as far as office hours and what we can deliver. And that and that's created out of multiple things because uh, there's traditional university that says, you know, you have to have these in-person faculty hours um, to meet the student. Uh, we have changing student base, right? Um, we also have changing technology. And so it's just time to look at this from a marketing perspective and revisit, revisit um, the notion of office hours so that they're effective not only for students, but for faculty. So gaps in our delivery create stress. They create stress for our students. And we realized that in, in general customer service, we do see these same issues in higher ed. Uh, right within higher ed, the knowledge gap is the gap between what our learners expect from us and what we think they expect. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes the notion of this face-to-face, -face, uh, in-person office hours is, is not really what learners expect or need any longer. Mm -hmm. And so in 2017, Smith identified a mismatch between the university purpose of office hours and students' perception of those office hours noting that institutions need to more strongly value and support student-faculty interaction. So we need to be present uh, for our students when they need us. So our goal in, in looking at this research was to identify this culture of responsiveness and to provide some opportunities, some ideas that we can talk about to become more responsive to student needs. So we looked at scheduled in-person office hours, virtual office hours, the combining of these to create a culture of responsiveness so that it's learner-centric. So we found in the research over the years that virtual offices, uh, office hours help improve student engagement and support. Uh, learners um, you did not use virtual office hours more than traditional. So do we really want virtual office hours? Do we need to generate awareness for them? What are we, what are we missing here in the office hour awareness? So virtual office hours were kind of the interim step, right? And so during the pandemic, <clears throat> we, re we re uh, revealed that there were accessibility and equity issues and that we needed to take the virtual office a, a bit further. And so the virtual office hours are great for students that live off campus or out of the city, um, or perhaps they have a disability, um, or perhaps they, they can't meet in person. Um, but the virtual hour office hours may not be the perfect scenario um, because they're still not scheduled or they're not on demand as needed. So going forward, we want to rethink to identify the most effective, efficient, and valued methods for faculty availability and support outside of the classroom. So we have posited flipping scheduled office hours to be response-based and learner-centric. Instead of expecting learners to make arrangements with us in the office or online at a certain date, is that we leverage the technology and allow the student to get on our calendar when they need and want the support. Quality Matters suggests that faculty include in their syllabi their response times for emails and phone calls. So this is that generating awareness that you know we ex uh, you will receive a response in this amount of time so that we're kind of setting the expectations for the students in advance so that we're not disappointing them. There's an increasing need for organizational flexibility and responsiveness to learners in today's fast paced and changing education environment. And because of increased competition, business schools may need to be more flexible. And we have to think about being more innovative and responsive to student needs.
So learners today want and need faculty who are responsive and available. And we keep mentioning that word responsive and available. And we're going to talk here in a few minutes about uh, some things that I, I'm seeing with clients that we're seeing kind of with some other universities. Um, but technology is a real driver of this. Um, today, it supports more timely interaction between faculty and learners. And marketing in consumer behavior offers insight about these service dimensions and identifies some delivery gaps that we're finding in higher ed. And online universities and faculty must realize the issues <clears throat> of faculty availability. And we've got to take that step further to get beyond the virtual office hours. And universities, we want them to support us in leveraging the technologies and the best practices so that we create this centric, cultural centric of uh, responsiveness to our learners. This is a look at the references here. Um, one, of the, uh, one of the universities, well, actually many of the universities that I work with today um, are looking at leaning heavily on technologies like time trade to where you open your calendar for students. They jump on your time trade calendar and they plug in where they want to schedule time. Now for the faculty, you can block your time. So it's, it's not an issue of, oh my gosh, I've, I've got to go do this thing or it's during a family time or it's two in the morning. So you can block times, but this allows the student to choose times that work best for them. Some uh, faculty departments have even gotten together to share a calendar, to have a shared calendar to where, you know, two days a week, Susie takes it and another day, Jim takes it and John takes it for a few hours. And there are all these common questions that we expect students to have about marketing or whatever class you're teaching, right? And so those faculty members will get together. They'll have a list of FAQs. The student can jump on anybody's calendar and get help. So it's kind of a coming together and sharing the knowledge with all the faculty and allowing that calendar to be open to be more uh, supportive of student needs and the times that they need. So, uh, you know, sometimes uh, I've gotten a student who will try to jump on my calendar at 11 o'clock at night. And you know what, if I'm available, it's great. Um, but you can block those times. But it does allow this opportunity for students to feel like they've got more interest, that, that we're being more responsive to their needs as far as picking up the phone saying, hey, what, what is this on the assignment? I don't understand this, it's due now. Dana, do you wanna jump in? Yeah, I wanted to add that, um, now I, I am in a somewhat different situation than some instructors in that I teach upper level undergrad courses and graduate courses. So most of my students are adult learners and they're very responsible um, for the most part. And so I feel very comfortable in giving them my personal cell phone number. And I tell them, you know, now I'm old, so please don't call in the middle of the night. Um, you know, but if you are responsible and, and considerate about this, I will share this number with you. And so I will get text messages primarily. Every now and then I'll get a text and say, can I call you? And just, I've had um, informal anecdotal feedback that basically says, I know that you're there for me. And that makes me have more confidence in completing this assignment. And they also think twice before abusing that. And I know that that may not work for everyone, um, but it's something that I've done for years, um, like more than maybe 10 or 15 years. And it's worked really well in my situation. Um, I think the biggest shift here is the concept that we need to change to support our learners, not them change to fit in with our decades old concepts. So that's our presentation. And I think we delivered it in record time. <laughs> Are there any questions, comments? Um, Tracy, do we need to turn it over to you? I was just waiting to see if anyone had a question. Um, Sorry, okay. I don't really, I don't have a question. I just, I thought it was really cool when you said that, that, that feedback you got, just knowing that you are there, you are available and how big of a difference that makes. I think that was huge. 
I have to, a quick story. One time I was at an international conference. So I'm, I'm a president of, of the U.S. chapter of Oklahoma Society. Well, it's a French name, um, but it's basically the International Association of Business Educators. And I was at a conference in Puerto Rico and we actually went to the rainforest. And one of my colleagues gives me a really hard time because I got a phone call from a student. And so I'm walking around, you know, in the rainforest trying to find, get the best signal so I could answer their question. And it was like a, a two minute phone call. But um, she looked at me and said, you really are responsive. And I'm like, that took little time. I mean, it was kind of odd and unusual, but, you know, they're going to succeed now with this assignment. So, um, yeah, I'm not really good. Difference. Yeah. That's yeah. Nice. Of course, she still harasses me to this day, teases me about it. But um, I just don't think it's that big of a deal um, to be responsive and to be available. I don't have students. My experience is students have not abused that. I guess you could have two phone two phones if you needed to. I, I work in business, perhaps, or use Google Voice um, or, or another online tool. But it's the basic, really, the, these are minutia details. It's the concept. Absolutely. We thank you so much today for your presentation. Thank you. Thank you so much.